Welcome back to Metroid Fusion everyone, good to see you safe. We're heading into the nocturnal habitat, so I'll give you a little time to listen to the music. So as you can hear, the music in this sector is much more ambient. Adds to that little sense of dread I'd say. Anyway, we managed to find ourselves a new energy tank and we are going to need it. We also picked up a missile expansion. If you look closely at the machinery down here, it appears designed for some sort of manual labour. Possibly providing food to the creatures here. The backgrounds add to the sinister touch. And as we move carefully, there's one of our cold eggs. Shoot them and get by quickly. They will come after you, so move. Don't go through this door. And that's what happens when they get to you. They do a lot of damage. This door does lead to a missile expansion, but if you go in there, all guns blazing, you'll wind up getting killed. Same deal with there. Wait till we get the Varia suit. Also, Cold X can hide in blocks like that. Be very careful. The ominous music, sinister technology, and backgrounds basically just serve to amp up the tension here. We can't do anything about this path. I've already taken a bit of damage. I'm really, really bad at this apparently. Oh, we can actually sneak through there. Let's keep on moving. We have to be ve- We can stun them and we have to run through here with the speed booster. I was having a pretty bad time of things the first time I did this and that wound up getting me killed, admittedly, because I tried to bomb my way through, realised I needed the speed booster and got mobbed by those. So, in order to proceed, bomb this. We have another energy tank, so we're in much better shape. That way needs power bombs, but...
should be safe to proceed now. Let's go on to the next area. And we have plenty of enemies we can shoot for refills. We'll be able to blast our way through here too. We can hide up there if we wind up attracting the attention of the SAX, I believe. Don't think there's anything around here. Think. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. With some frenzied rapid fire shooting, we can grab another missile tank. Keep our health well topped up for what's coming. And be very careful about which blocks we shoot, too. But you can tell something's going wrong because that ominous music is playing. One super missile will take care of the Ghidorah. And of course, more has gone wrong. Our data room is gone. And the Corex has escaped. Let's go and get that information back. Because that Core X has stolen it. This is the Barrier Core X. Its main attack is ramming us. Shoot the core with your charge beam. Missiles do not work. Which admittedly is particularly strange. Blast away at it, you'll see it change colour as it takes damage and try not to jump into it like I'm doing. Also, you'll recognise the boss music as being Zazabee's. Dodge its attacks. Shoot it with five super missiles. Or is it six? And we have recovered the various suit. We can now survive extreme temperatures. The water disappears as we get an effect that shows off what is admittedly a vomit green suit. I'm really not that keen on the looks of the various suit, but we have to put up with it. On the bright side, in terms of looking beautiful, just check out the backgrounds here. Almost looks like a face. Yeah, if you get it in the right spot and you see those caves, it looks like a snarling face. It's really good attention to detail that just makes things that little bit more unsettling. We have some pickups we can get near here too, so... Of course, we'll continue on. And there we are, some cold eggs. They will start flying at you. They're still trying to infect you. But eventually, like all the other X, they will realise that things are going badly wrong. 
actually quite a clever touch. If we go through here, we can perform a very carefully timed jump to get a missile tank. Grab on here. And in the ceiling is another missile tank. Doing pretty well on getting those. But we'll have to drop back down here. Notice how they're not suddenly rushing to try and infect us. This was about where the power went out last time I was playing. Little unfortunate, but... So those are balls, puffers, whatever you want to call them. I'm used to calling them puffers because I think that's what they were in Metroid Prime. So we're back in recognisable territory. Check the map and you'll see there are some locations we can head to. Let's go this way for a bit. Laughing in the face of the cold eggs that try and absorb us. And also demonstrating why I graduated with honours from Stormtrooper School. We can still stun them though. You'll notice the enemy layout has changed slightly. But not too big a concern. If you want to save, you can head through here. A nice cluster of enemies. In terms of atmosphere, I have to say I think the Nocturnal Sector is probably one of the best. It has some really beautiful graphics. Just that sort of really unnerving music keeping very well in line with the sound design of the game and on top of that I really like nighttime environments I've always been a night person if I'm going to be honest I don't really like the daytime as much I mean obviously it's nice sort of being awake during the daytime but I just tend to find a bit more comfort in sort of having that time to do my own thing at night. It's sort of relaxation time for me, in a sense. And of course, with everything I've mentioned, I do prefer short, cool days and long nights. We can grab a couple of things here, but really, I think this area is a great testament to the design style of the game. There's this slightly otherworldly feel to all this. We're going to need power bombs for this, so... Unfortunately, nothing to do here at the moment, but we can go into the other room. I do apologise for getting slightly disjointed in my commentary because partly I'm trying to be instructive, tell you this is what we need to do for the sake of the game, but I'm also trying to share my experiences. And in all fairness, I do think that this the design of the nighttime sector is just fantastic. You have this slightly alien feel in those different hues. It's just that little bit off. It's familiar enough, but it's just off like the rest of the game. I think it's a really good summary of what the designs for Metroid Fusion were like. Now, interestingly, we try to pick this up, it turns into a fake. My terrible accuracy gets in the way again. We can bomb our way through here and get the actual missile tank. Now this is an element that's not quite explored. What exactly 
is the reason for that. Did the X take it over? Oh yes, also trying to get through here without the Varia suit is an absolute nightmare because you're immediately swamped by X. It would be interesting to see just what they can and can't infect, what sort of abilities they do possess. Because we already know we they can infect biological matter, but... Missile tanks wouldn't exactly be biological, yet they're still able to take it over. Interesting indeed, and probably not explored enough in the series. And something else I'm realising, as the enemies get a little bit stronger, the fact we have such an average weapon, still just the charge beam which has powered things up a little bit but not by much, really does help with the feeling that we're outgunned. We have plenty of energy tanks. Under most circumstances this would make us pretty tough, but not Metroid Fusion. We have a beautiful array of creepy environments in which we're alone and outgunned against enemies which have a grudge against us and are capable of reasoning and creating their own plans. I think we're at pretty much full capacity so let's go and talk to Adam and we can wrap things up for this episode. How did that X download the Varia suit data? This doesn't seem to make any sense at all, unless the X... Unless the X have the ability to process data organically. At any rate, you have the Varia suit data. Now you'll be protected from extreme temperatures. More importantly, the SAX will no longer be able to freeze you, so you can escape easier. But you're still too weak. That thing is too much for you. You currently have no way of damaging it. But my simulations indicate that a penetrating weapon, like the plasma beam, might work. Developing modification data will take HQ some time, though. There's also a chance that you may be able to restore your plasma beam by absorbing a large core X, as you did with the charge beam function. As for restoring ice beam functionality, I doubt it. Your current cellular makeup would reject that addition. Therefore, HQ has developed a nice missile upgrade. This will add a freezing effect to your missiles. It will help. Go to Sector 5 ARC for the download. Is your objective clear? Now, get moving. Well... Things are pretty clear for us. We know what we have to do, where to go, and we have a pretty good addition to the series. The ice missiles would make a return in Metroid Prime 3. So not too bad all in all, we've gone from an environment I don't like, to an environment I do, and then we will be going somewhere nice and cold. I appreciate the cold, even if Sub-Zero is a bit much. We'll wrap things up for here, ready to head into the next sector in the next episode. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time for more Metroid Fusion. Stay safe out in space, everyone. <laughs>